debrief. We've played every mission of the mainline Halo video games, and now we're playing every mission from the rest of the games in the franchise in chronological order. Each episode we'll be discussing our experiences and sprinkling in a little lore along the way. If you'd like to play along and have your thoughts read on the show, email us at podcastevolved at gmail.com or drop us a tweet at podcastevolved on Twitter. We'll be playing the Arcadia Outskirts mission from Halo Wars on the next episode. If you like what you hear and want to support the show, visit Podcast Evolved on Patreon. This episode, we're debriefing the Arcadia City mission from Halo Wars. I'm your host, Colin Perkins, alongside David Arnold. Hello, everybody. And Krista Brown. Look at the tiny Spartans. Look at them. Aren't they cute? <laughs> <laughs> They're so Little cute. Babies. I just want to, like, uh, give them pats on the head. <laughs> oh, my God. I love them. Last mission was Relic Interior. Inside the mysterious Forerunner site, Professor Anders activated a map that appeared to be the reason the Covenant continued their campaign on Harvest. The investigation was abruptly interrupted by a retaliation force set on covering the Covenant's tracks and eliminating the UNSC menace. The Spirit of Fire quickly deployed a pair of Grizzly super tanks to rescue Forge, Anders, and the Trap Marines. The rolling beasts beat back the coveys, squashed countless wormies, and escorted the UNSC personnel back to safety. In Arcadia City, following the information Professor Anders extracted from the Forerunner Relic, the Spirit of Fire left Harvest and traveled to Arcadia. Upon arrival, they discovered the planet is under attack by the Covenant. Sergeant Forge is deployed to the surface to aid in the civilian evacuation led by a trio of Spartan twos. Enter Red Team. The date of They're the not game... red. <laughs> date They're of the like game yellow. February 9th, 2531. <laughs> David, take us through this cutscene. What's happening? Hello, yellow team. Ew. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> they are like a green, Ew. yellowy... Yeah. They're, they're yellow. They're, they're just yellow. Um, so... This cut seems really cool. So it pretty much picks up where you think uh, I was wrong in saying that. I thought it was a galaxy map, but in fact it was a specific map of a specific system that um, Anders quickly identifies as Arcadia and the Arcadia system. So they're like, wait, what? We're here at Harvest. We're here to fight and liberate Harvest. And she wants to go to Arcadia. Now, Arcadia is something we kind of loosely would have heard of in Halo lore I think some of the books might have mentioned it and stuff like that, but you wouldn't really know it's there. They quickly tell you it's kind of like, it's kind of like a paradise planet. It's what they're kind of like a holiday kind of planet, beachy kind of like, it's a nice place. It's a vacation Not, planet. It's a fake, that's the word I was looking for. It's a vacation planet. It's going to got a couple of million population. It hasn't been hugely explored. It's very much a nice place. To be if Hawaii really kind of chimes was in a about planet. That. <laughs> yeah, that kind of vibe. And the dynamics here are very interesting between Anders, Cutter and Serena. Um, so Anders is very passionate and wants to go there. Cutter is like, no, we're here for this mission. And, but he's very easily won over by it, by Anders and, and her conviction that whatever the covenant we're here to do, it has to do with Arcadia and they were here before us. So who knows what they know? I don't actually know how they know where to go next, but anyway, Mm -hmm. um, Anders knows that we need to go to Arcadia. Convinces Cutter. Cutter is like, yeah, straight away. Okay, fine. Set course for Arcadia and I'll clear it with Lord Hood. Uh, or Cole, sorry. With uh, Emerald Cole, uh, which is a nice shout out because Emerald Cole is a bit of a badass. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and you know him from other, other Halo stories. So, Serena then says, aye, aye, Captain, going to the initiating crazy plan to... Oh, how does she word it? She's like, the crazy plan to it's initiating go to like arcadia a crazy like, it's initiating yeah. crazy plan to go to arcadia for no reason exactly. or something like that and anders is having none of it and she's like serena get out of my lab like there's <laughs> no love lost between these two characters the um, so is strong a hundred percent um then we get a pretty much fade to black open up we're in arcadia everybody yay wait a minute Space, the Covenant are already here. <laughs> Everything's on fire. <laughs> and we're like, holy crap. Uh, the planet's already under attack. So Cutter immediately is trying to assess the situation. He says, okay, there's four ships that are already here. 
You have the Belfast. Yay, Belfast. You have the Pillar of Autumn. What? That's the Pillar of Autumn. We have the Armstrong. What? And why am I blanking on the fourth? Damn it, I should have had it. Texas. I was doing so well. Texas. Excellent. There we go. The Belfast and the Texas are destroyed. Uh, they pretty much get wiped out. And the Pillar of Autumn is heavily damaged. And the Tex, no other one, Armstrong, is also heavily damaged. But they managed to take out one of the Covenant ships with its, with it, with its shields down. And the last, final ship is beginning kind of a ground environment, ground operations. So Cutter is is pretty much like, okay, we need to get on the ground. And he gets to, to get a distress call. It's pretty much a Marine saying, you know, the Covenant are here, aliens are here, they're killing us masters we we're trying to uh, we're trying to retreat um but we do you know what I mean we're struggling and then eventually as they get closer they get a video feed and it's really grainy you only know what's going on it's kind of cutting across cutter is, is watching this on, on his screen and then you get like the beautiful this is probably not the best intro for these but let's just say it, it's a intro but you get the monks theme of halo and then you see Spartans running across. Not one, so two, good, three though. Spartans run it, running across. Which is like, holy crap, why are Spartans there? Cutter, I don't know if he knows what they are. But straight away he's like, okay, red alert. We're on the ground. Go drop the pods. Yep. And I was like, oh shit. Do you know what I mean? He's all business once he sees the Spartans. Um, so I thought that was quite fascinating. You get a good and, sense of urgency. like, And like the music picks yeah. up too. It's like, oh crap, we got to get down there now. Yeah, 100%. And then that's pretty, that's the scene. Then we're done into the game yep, very nice yeah it's good it's a good it's a long cut scene but very good set in, is, set in the is. tone um it's only a couple days so it's what we were on february 4th i think and now it's the 9th so arcadia must be fairly close from a slip space travel standpoint um like it's not that that really matters no, but it's just a, a note good point. you know as we're talking about lore and whatnot so let's go over the uh, mission objective i guess anything to add krista on the cutscene? uh it's beautiful <laughs> yes, I don't know. I mean, yeah, sure is. You, you pretty much hit all the major beats. Okay, cool. Um, let's get into the objectives then. The main objectives here are to clear Covenant from the subway exit. So as you kind of get down into the map, you'll see Forge and he's chatting with Cutter. Um, Forge has his um, hog, with his Goss hog, and then you. I think you have four total hornets, and then you you kind of fly over the map. And you see how the Covenant is invading. And the Covenant is just killing civilians. They're just, you know, just taking them out. And the goal is to to escort civilians that are kind of coming out of this subway area all the way to these, um, what are they called? The rescue ships. So uh, cargo transports, I think, is what they, they call them. So yeah, the first objective is to clear the Covenant from the subway exit. And then the next objective is just to protect the civilians and the cargo transports themselves until they launch and then you will eventually get a countdown timer in a little bit the optional objectives are kill 50 elites and when that happens that's when you pop the skull um another optional objective i guess you could beat this somehow without establishing a base i don't know how that's optional. i don't know there's no way <laughs> um no way. then establish a second base rescue fifth or rescue 500 civilians and then the final objectives, or optional objective, is to rescue a thousand civilians. I was so close. Yeah. <laughs> I had like four hundred on one and like five hundred on another, and it was maybe like, you know, five four hundred and five hundred would change. So I was like maybe thirty civilians short. Oh, I was so man. pissed off. Oh no. So do the countdown because when the countdown at the very end of the mission, and we'll go over that. Um, it's stressful, right? And you're like, come on, I just need a couple more. Get up, move faster, you sons of bitches. Yeah. This whole mission is very stressful. Very it, stressful. Especially the first, the first couple times around it is, but once mm -hmm. you get like your bearings and you know what you're doing, it's not as bad. Yeah. You definitely have to learn to just give up on transport three entirely. Like, well, fuck I'm pretty, I, I want, I'm, I was going to ask. That's scripted. Is it actually possible? No. I'm pretty sure that's scripted because I got to them and I like, I was like, this took me two goals, so I failed the first time. And I realized, Colin, why you said you disliked this map. The, <laughs> this sucks. Map the week before. I was like, yes, this, yeah, I'm not a huge fan of this one. Yep. But anyway. Well, and like, I the went... problem with the map itself is like half the time, like, if I have any ground units, they're getting stuck on buildings and shit, and they're not able to go straight to where they need to go. Like, the pathing yeah, I... is not very good. Sure. It is, yeah, no, it's not very direct. 
So, do you guys think it was scripted? Because I invested heavily at the start uh, to try and save number three. Oh. And I want to know, did it blow up for you guys too? Uh, I actually looked it up, and three will oh, always nice. blow up. Three is a scripted oh, one that, that blows up, better. so you just have to like give up on three immediately and focus on one and two. Yep. Yeah, it's I scripted. Have done that. Yeah, that's it's handy information to know if you yeah, especially you know again I, I, this is not the one that I stuck with. I, well, let's let me let's go through the rest here. I need to go through the objectives, toy box, then we'll go a little bit more into the into our experiences before we get too deep into it. Um, okay, so rescue the thousand civilians. That is a, you know not easy. So that final optional objective. The part time is twenty one minutes to twenty three minutes, and I don't. I think the I, I'm not exactly sure. I don't when the think timer you can starts. go over time. Yeah, you can. The timer is set, but it, maybe it doesn't doesn't start until you clear the initial wave. That's right. Uh... Yeah, you could spend ages doing nothing at the start of the game. Yeah. So that, okay, that, that makes sense. I was confused because I'm like, this whole mission's timed. Why am I getting a time bonus? Right. Um, okay, so 21 to 23 minutes is the, is the time scoring goal. So to get gold, you need fi- uh, 50,000. And above, silver is 40 to 50, bronze is 30 to 40, tin is 0 to 30. So you need a hefty score even to get into that bronze category. Theoretical best score is 80,000 points. How'd you guys do? David? 55, 400, baby. Very nice. Bringing in That's a gold. goal. Good for you. Brista. 56 even. Hey. Ooh, nice. Okay, Mr. so I I, you were I on bested heroic. you. I I bested you, but I played this mission probably like ten times. <laughs> oh, this was <laughs> my I third needed, try. I needed to get gold, so I all my entry score is going to be thirty three, eight eight eighty. That's that's what I enter for mission debrief. So I lose this time, but I, my high score was seventy thousand one hundred. Oh, very After nice. I, I played it and played it and played it and played it again, and finally figured out like everything perfectly. Oh, uh, was that your first score, the thirty three? It was like my third score, oh, okay. something like that. Yeah. Um. So that was my, that's my submission to the podcast. Oh. <laughs> but um, I'm gonna try to get gold on all of these. Um, it's just a matter of like you know how high up I get. I was surprised because the what what got me up there the the mission the one I did before I think was in the forty range. I didn't quite have quite have gold, but I didn't get that last hundred thousand civilians. Um, I didn't get that last optional objective, and it, and then the multiplier didn't kick in as as high for me. So once I did get that, because I got that, that's why I got up to 70. Oh, nice. Yeah, that was the only one I didn't get when I got gold. I was really pissed off. I was happy with but my score. But you still score, got gold. Still yeah, like, you still yeah. got gold. That's good. I was still I like, I just wanted that one. If I got that one last one, I would have gotten something way higher. And you're yeah. playing this on heroic, right? Her- yeah, heroic. Uh, above yes, normal, this sure. is, it's just so annoying. Like, normal's yeah. annoying enough, but playing on heroic or legendary, like, on legendary, the, um... The whole thing is literally just d- don't give a shit about the civilians. Don't yeah. pick one transport and just do that one the entire time and spam heals on it. Mm-hmm. And literally just throw all of your units like just onto the transport and just keep them there. So the modifications, um, speaking of, so on easy it says all enemy units have 50% less health points. And inflict 50% less damage. There is no Covenant Mega Turret at the very end on easy. On Heroic, the Covenant Mega Turret attacks any UNSC forces during the last leg of the mission, which is what I was dealing with. It's like and one then, minute of it, though, right? Yeah, it's not too bad, but they were like they were, they were um, bombarding my base and stuff. Oh, after um, the minute, I gave up on my base and just had all my units like at the... Uh... Oh, 100%. I didn't even realize... I was like, they, I remember them. They said something about a cannon. I was like, oh shit! And I never saw anything. Mm-hmm. But then at that stage, I had got everybody out of the base. Sure, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, Legendary says all enemy units have twenty five percent more health and inflict twenty five percent more damage. Covenant mega turrets attack any UNSC forces during the last leg of the mission. Okay, that's just a carryover from heroic. Um, there you go, Krista. Why don't you take us through a toy box? Oh, we'll, we got a we'll lot go of fun stuff. I feel mm-hmm. like you can't, you don't have really enough time to use everything. So you kind of have to pick and choose a little yeah. bit, but you get a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. So, of course, we have our hero units. We have Forge. We know Forge. He starts off in his Warthog. And then we have all of our Spartan 2s. Unfortunately, what? 
Yeah. Spartan twos. Yeah. They get to help us this mission. <laughs> we can't directly yeah, control them in this mission, but we mm-hmm. have Jerome, Alice, and Douglas. And something cool that these guys can do that we'll see in the future is that they can take over Covenant vehicles. Yeah. So if you're wondering hmm. why one of the Banshees has suddenly turned gold and is chilling with your dudes, <laughs> that's why. It's kind of yeah. fun to see, too. They just it's literally, like... It jump on the jump onto them and just yeah the animations are great yeah they just beat the hell out of it and then hop in it's great it's do, do you, so good i didn't watch the full animation i don't think i sat. i didn't think i sat there and stared at it do you know if like the covenant uh unit like the elite or whatever's driving it, will they fall out or do they just yeah hop in? they just throw them out okay that's cool though that they added that it kind of looks like a hijack from like halo 3 mm-hmm. is what it looks like and i think that's probably what it's modeled off after um so we start you start off with your fire base you can upgrade to a station and then a fortress so there are three different upgrades you can do each one adds two more pads i think uh yeah two more pads. you start yeah. out with three, three. Go to five, yeah and then go to seven yep yep uh you get your supply pads your heavy supply pads your reactor your advanced reactor you get some turrets you can upgrade them f- for flame for inter- infantry rail for vehicle and missile launcher for air and then warthogs. The warthogs don't have guns, so you have to upgrade Start, them to get the yeah. guns, which is kind of annoying. I was thinking it's so annoying. I was thinking, mm-hmm. why would they have these warthogs without guns? And I'm like, maybe you can load civilians into them. So one of the missions, I just put them next to civilians. But well, I think in the last mission, David said it's a like an RTS mechanic, like a scout mechanic. Yeah, but it doesn't make sense. sense in this one. It's like they don't have a gun right away, but you can go clear the fog. And then see what's out there. Meanwhile, you can be adding the the gun as an upgrade if you want. So it is. I don't know. I think it would be cool (laughs) to have like a vehicle that can like shuttle some of the some of the people Mm -hmm. back and forth. So you can have them doing that. Troop carrier because they have troop hogs. Yeah. Thing. Which is what a which is literally a hog without a gun. Which is what I thought it was. Well, but it's got the little little roll cage in the back too. So ah whatever. Um, so you can get barracks, so you can get marines and flamethrower guys, upgrade mm. them so they're super shiny. A uh, vehicle depot, a uh, depot, <laughs> depot. I'm just oh, reading depot. the script, oh my god. Uh, <laughs> scorpion, we all know and love, the cobra, uh, and we get the wolverine. What? So freaking helpful for those goddamn banshees. Those were what yeah. was killing my, uh, oh, my shuttle. This is what I should have done. Yes. Yeah, I totally forgot about the Wolverine. So the one that I got a good score on, I made three Wolverines. I put oh, two nice. I put two on one because one got a hell of a ton of Banshees all the time, and I put one on two. Mm-hmm. And then I just did, did whatever else I was doing, but it helped so much. The most annoying thing is that when you kill the Banshees, they can crash into your supply carrier. Oh, I hate that so much. Oh, it's really annoying, and it takes a huge yeah. chunk of health, too, yep. which sucks. Um, we get an air pad in this one. I'm not sure if you noticed, but we start with some vehicles that are not on the ground, but in the air. What? Yeah. Air pad? Yeah. Interesting. Tell me more about these units. Air, they're hornets, one of our favorite vehicles from Halo 3, and they, uh, shoot guys, but in the air. (laughs) Right. That's, Hmm. that's about the difference. But the nice, the really OP thing about air units in Halo Wars is that not a lot of... Vehicles are very effective against them, mm-hmm. especially as we get later into the game. So they're one of the best things to have is just a shit ton of hornets and like yeah. a couple like scorpions. Yeah. Yeah. When you upgrade them, you get a extra gunner with a rocket launcher. Mm-hmm. The way they move great. around, too, does remind me of like a little swarm, which is cool. I know. Yeah. Well, That's and also good. they look really good together, and they're so good on this map because all of the stupid things yeah. down in the streets don't affect them, and they can just fly right. over water and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. They can get there quick. Yeah, because when I was starting out making my base and stuff, I would instantly put down some marines and stuff, and they're so ineffective on this map. Just regular yeah. marines. I will say I did the one thing that I generally haven't done in this game. I garrisoned my marines in those platforms. Yep, that helps. Uh... And they. they... They yeah. kicked ass in there. They did so well for me. Oh, yeah, I didn't I realize that was a, a good idea until it took me forever to take down like a, an elite that was in one of those platforms. Yes, like, that's oh, exactly what God, I thought. Guys, take I had, forever. I had my six hornets shooting at this, and I was like, "Why is he still alive?" Right. I'm like, "Okay, I'm putting my dudes in yeah. there," and they they cleaned yeah. up. They did super. And well. they light the way on the map too, so you can kind of see everything that's going on around. Oh, uh, that's exactly. such a good idea. Because then, 
Because then yeah. it also prevents the Covenant from getting into them, because it's really mm-hmm. annoying when they get into them. Absolutely. Yeah. <sighs> I should have done that. Um, so we have another, we have a new building. It's called the Field Armory. Mm-hmm. The Field Armory has a bunch of nice stuff, like reinforcements that gives you plus 10 to your population. Yeah. That's like, heavy. holy shit, it's so nice. Um, reserves gives this, you some extra... It's faster building is yeah. what that is. So okay. your, 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 your builds, training, training will, will be done faster. Yep. Yeah. Turret upgrades... Their turret upgrades, but they actually are really nice later on in the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, upgraded. Like there's a medium and then a large, I think. Yes. Uh, mm-hmm. Adrenaline. Does it make your units spawn faster? Is that what that is? More health. More health. Okay. More health, More health for the yeah. units. And then carpet bomb upgrades. Mm-hmm. We get a carpet, mm-hmm. bomb. carpet bomb. So that's from. Is it? That must be coming from the spirit of fire. Yeah. Yeah. You get all your you spirit get a, of fire yeah. abilities. You get. A, I think the carpet bomb is actually like. Is it long swords or something like that? Come down and, and yes. drop them. I don't think it's it's not. It's like a strafing. Room. Oh, it's that's not you like see a the direct units come fire down. from. That makes sense. Yep. It's yeah. really nice when you're just in a kind of a pinch. Like units are attacking yeah. your base and you don't have anyone nearby. You can just carpet bomb them. But I think you need to have you... sight of it, right? You have to have. Be, yeah, but it's if it's attacking your base. Or... Yeah. Your base yeah, it has sense. sight. Yep. Uh, it's you get some really cool leader powers that I absolutely totally forgot about. Like in, in this game, so you can heal, which is very the useful healing, for like the healing for, heals for he- the carriers, healing your, like, which is what you should be doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and there is the carpet bomb, like you said, Chris. There's also the pelican transports. Did you guys use this? Because I totally what? forgot. It wasn't in this one for me. It was available. It was in that. It was in the wheel. I never tried to select oh, it, but was. you can. I didn't see it. You can bring. Yeah, you can bring in pelicans. They will pick up marines, and then you tell them where to go, and they'll drop them down there. Oh, that sounds actually it's, kind of nice, but uh, also kind of a waste yeah. of resources. That's like at the very 100%. end when you need to do stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I didn't use it, but like it was there. It was in the wheel. And then you have the ODST drops, Woo! which is yeah. my favorite thing in this game that I wish I had remember to use on this map because <laughs> they're so good it doesn't cost quite a bit though isn't it like 800 or something like that it is and you have to have like a lot of power yeah, and you, have, you have to have bolts. the um the population to support oh them. right yeah so it adds quite a few that's what uh that's what caught, got me caught near the end when i remembered it and i was like oh my god i'm bringing down all these mm-hmm. and i didn't have the population i was like god damn it that makes sense what's on the covenant side krista uh we got a lot of nice covenant stuff elites grunts jackals hunters we've all seen that really nice uh we have some shade turrets and those towers we were talking about earlier a lot of spirit there's drop two kind of, sorry there's two kind of towers there's like the yeah the covenant, covenant towers, towers. Used to, and then there's like this like platform like city structural type of tower as well it's essentially like a almost like a cherry Kinda picker like that, or like yeah yeah well and you can you can totally just destroy the covenant towers as well mm-hmm which is nice. Uh, well, we you have... can, they, they fold down, but then you can put somebody back in once you, you can garrison uh, yeah. into okay. them if you want to. Um, spirit drop ships. Mm-hmm. Spirit drop ships. I mean, you can blow them up. It's really satisfying. Very nice. Yes. Uh, we have some fun ground vehicles. Ghosts, wraiths, and I think I don't think locusts are on normal. Uh, yeah, I saw a locust. Oh, okay. I didn't see a locust at all. They don't. There is an enemy base in this map in yep. the top right hand corner. Mm-hmm. If you try and attack it, there is a shit ton of stuff up there, and I found locusts up there because I tried once and got wiped. Oh, okay. Uh, I was like, oh, so yeah, it's just supposed to idea. like sit there. They're you know, bastards on yeah. a rock. Oh yeah. Uh, we have. Although some... it's fun to see uh, one of the Spartans hijack a locust. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not very good for this mission though. We don't want to even deal with locusts. Mm-mm. Uh, we have air units. We have banshees and vampires. What? Ooh, so mm. vampires are called the Type Twenty Nine Close Support Fighter. It's a atmospheric anti anti aircraft fighter. So it's a okay. uh, just an okay. anti aircraft unit in the air. It's a hefty banshee. I mean, it looks different, oh, right? Yeah, it's kind okay. of like a flatter. It's almost shaped kind of like a claw. I totally noticed that and was like, that's a weird looking banshee. And then carry on with my job. <laughs> I didn't realize it was actually something different. Because <laughs> it was doing strafing runs. It wasn't like hovering. It was just kind of bombing things and kept going. Oh, okay. Or at least that, that's what yeah. I looked like. It does. Maybe it was shooting my hornets. I don't, uh, like, anyway. I don't like them. They're not very nice. No, they're sure. very mean. They are. They're a bunch they're of bullies. I'd rather fight banshees. Yeah. 
Band sheets are just look cooler as well. I mean, come on. Uh, and finally, we have the mega turret, which we talked about earlier. You don't really get to. Do you? Can you see the mega turret, or does it just fire off? Fire you can at see, you if you go over to the base. You can see them. Oh, okay. It literally yeah. is just like giant balls of plasma that they hit your base with and stuff. Mm hmm. Yeah, the mega turret. I think the mega turret's in the next mission too. I think I did do one dry run on the next mission. And there, that How too, dare so you? Pop How dare you work ahead? There there. <laughs> um. Spoilers, Colin. What dare you? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> okay, cool. All right, let's now we've we've kind of given you some of the, some tips and some thoughts of the overall mission. Um, David, why don't you start and kind of take us through how you attacked this mission with Forge and Start and like kind of your approach to like how did you find success? Uh, yes, I will tell you about my successful one. Um, pretty much I because of forgot about a lot but i did remember about the veteran veterancy mm -hmm. i heavily invested in keeping the first six hornets alive and they you were so powerful start? by the end of my game you got you got six on normal oh, I had four. and that's in, it's in the trivia that's nice. yeah you get four in a heroic and legendary even though there's like there's six in the sequence when you begin when the oh, actual funny. game starts you only get four mm -hmm. yeah um so i kept those bad boys alive and just bounced them all over the map killing things Constantly, I always was moving those hornets. I used Forge to kind of clear the map and shoot some things, but he was pretty useless in, in this game, in this mission, to be honest. Uh, once I got yeah. a base, like I said, I, I, I immediately... Well, the first time I did try and save number three, but like when it died, I was like, oh, F this. And I heavily invested in, in one because that actually is the next one that gets under attack and they almost always go there. Um, so I was kind of, okay, send some Marines, garrison them around in like a, a few places around two and one. Uh -huh. And then pretty much spent the game bouncing around, using lots of health, using that leader power over and over again to heal my um my hornets. And I used them just to kick everybody's ass. Yeah. They cleaned up six six hornets just cleaned up on, yeah. on this map that for me. Nice. I just I decided not to go near the base this time. Um, I built I built the two bases, a shit ton of supply pads, one or two research stations, um, sorry, uh, power plants, and I did build two scorpions in the end of the game. Because I was like, oh, wait, there's vehicles on this game. Oh, right. Isn't, do, you know, do you know what I mean? So like, I was like, oh, yeah, I better build a vehicle. Because uh -huh. I didn't remember what happened at the end. I, I thought like it was a big wave of enemies uh -oh. as opposed to a turret shooting. So I was like, I better get ready for what actually is coming sure. at me. And um, it, it didn't really increase too heavily. Uh, I will say I thought the Spartans were like really disappointing in terms of support. You, you couldn't overly rely on them. The best thing they could do was take a vehicle. But like, well, then they just sit by the transports them, anyway, so it's kind of hard. Yeah, to use yeah, them. yeah. You you can't overly re rely on them. Um, but that's pretty much all I did. Uh -huh. Um, I abandoned the base near the end. Um, I was trying to get um. So you my, just did. Uh, sorry, you just did one base. I did two bases. Did I did. Two, I did do two okay. bases. One of them was just one of them was just generating just money, um, yep. money for me. Gotcha. Do you know what I mean? I that's all I did with it. And so, which one did you uh, start with? The one that was in the kind of south. The one, the one lower end. The one that's not near, like because the, the one at the top them. is very near to cover yeah. the base. Okay. No, I did. I did build that up and put turrets all around it because it it was like an area that got attacked. Mm -hmm. But I didn't really care. I didn't really care. Okay. So it, it was fine. And then I succeeded. So yeah, nice. me. And you ended up so you got the thousand um, civilians too. I never checked. I totally. <laughs> but you got a goal. I don't. So I don't think so. I got, most of the objectives. Like yeah, I think so. But I don't think I got a thousand. I'd be. He would have had a lot that. more because I got ahead of him and I didn't have thousand either. Okay. Yeah. So I I think I would have gone. I also was on normal. And you, you just kind of cleared the the west side of the map mostly. Yeah, I just held. Uh -huh. I just held the two points. Um, and sorry, Miss. Did did you have both transports or just one transport at the end? I had both transports. You at did. The end, okay. Got away. Now, very very close at one, one stage. Also, there is an achievement in this about like the oh, better win or something like that. I can't remember what it's called. Beside the black box. Yes, Adam. There's a Adam. Exactly. I never knew this, so I only saw him. I was looking up. I was like, I'm gonna try this. Mm -hmm. So I rescued Adam. So that was nice. I got an achievement for it. So I was happy. Very with nice it. of you. So, you get to save this little kid essentially. Yep. I, 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 I you can kind of scroll. You scroll over the middle of the map, and you hear this woman say, "Adam, have you seen Adam?" And you're like, "What is going on?" And then 
you will, if you kind of go into the center of the map, you'll see right where the black box is and then a little structure that you can mouse over and you can eject a little kid <laughs> from the, the subway, <laughs> what? I guess. Uh-huh. Um, I never the, knew that. The strategy guide says that Adam is coming out of, well, the strategy guide says that you can actually see him in the walkway, which I played it multiple times. I couldn't see him. There's like, you know, there's buildings and there's like a skyway that connects some of the buildings. I, and I was in the middle of playing. I tried to glance at it. I don't, you know, I didn't see him in there. Um, but it claims that you can see him in the, in the walkway above. But um, yeah, so you eject this little kid out and this little black, you know, shirted kid pops out and he like starts running. And, and it's, if he gets hit by anything, he dies. So oh you have to, fuck! You have to clear, kind of clear the path either beforehand or, yeah. or eject him, and then run ahead of him and clear out any covenant that are that are in the way. And he'll run to transport one, I think. I forget which one. He goes to two. Okay, two. Yeah, he, he did for me mm-hmm. anyway. I used the the hornets to kind of keep him alive, and it was cool. Yep. Uh, and it was one. So there, there we go. There you Ta-da. I have to do that. Yeah, save Adam. You get five achievement points. It's totally worth it. Ugh. Totally worth I it. Five <laughs> achievement points. Krista, how about you? Delicious. What, what was your successful run? Uh, my successful run, I at that point I knew where the bases were spawning. So when Transport Three explodes, I just put a hornet on each of those platforms. So once it pops up, I can immediately buy both of them, mm-hmm. and then I just go back. I just send the hornets back to do whatever they need to do. Uh, I start spamming a bunch of supply pads, and then yep. a what is it called? A reactor. armory. No, not an oh, armory. armory. A firebase. No. Well, the firebase <laughs> is the main structure. The barracks? Yes. Maybe? I'm sorry. The okay. barracks. Yeah. I throw up a barracks so that I can get at least a couple marines out or else there's nothing going to be nothing coming out of my bases. Mm-hmm. And then build up a, two reactors, get a vehicle depot, a wolverine, three of those couple yeah. scorpions and then so just... you skipped over the scorpion builds right away you waited for the wolverine yeah i waited for the wolverine i got the mm-hmm. war i did the wolverine right away instead just because every time my transport would explode it was because of banshees so i was just like screw it i'm getting a bunch of wolverines this time yeah uh and then oh, by the way just just to um the fail there are failure states right so if both cargo ships blow up you die. Then you then you're done. You need to try again. And then all if all your units are dead. So you can have bases up and ready, but if all of your units that are on the map die, then you also have to restart. Oh, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. Boo. <laughs> yeah, that sucks. So anyway, continue. Sometimes I kill all my units just for fun. What the fuck? <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, uh and then Got some scorpions and then just filled the rest of my population count with hornets. And then yeah. once I could, once I had extra money, I just uh, did the field armory and did reinforcement so I could just mm-hmm. spam out a couple more tanks. Yeah, get the 40 total units then. And I repaired those bitches so much. Yeah. I rep- I had to repair on Heroic. I had to use the repair right away. So my initial like clearing, where I was clearing down the subway area, and then I was I was kind of helping them get to the initial cargo ship for the before cargo ship three blows up descriptive event um i had to to heal my um my forge and hornets pretty much right away in order to get to keep them around the entire time i always kept forge near one of those things so that i could keep him healed i was able to keep Mm -hmm. him in the warthog the entire time which was nice yep that's huge you kind of have to do that if you want to get a high score i think yeah well and he can go around and get all the supplies when you're starting to build up too which is really Mm -hmm. nice he's the only unit that can do it that you spawn with he was helpful on wraiths for me. Whenever I ran oh, the wraith, I would just, just ram, ram the wraith. Yeah. Yeah. That was nice. Um, so let's see here. Did you were you using all units or were you doing, you know, local uh, units and sending out a couple squads? What were you doing? I had I positioned a couple people on both transports and then in the middle of the map I put my rally point where everything that was new just went to. And that was just kind of my main units, so I would whenever something needed killed i would highlight all of them take care of a couple things and just put them right back in the middle of the map Mm -hmm. and then i I just did it like that i found it a little easier like every once in a while i'd sprinkle like i'd have like a couple hornets on each thing and they'd be kind of sprinkled out they wouldn't Mm -hmm. be like directly on the transport they'd be kind of sprinkled around so that they could get a little more stuff but 
Most of, most of it was just its main unit that I was having go back and forth between stuff. Yeah. I mean, I found myself being feeling rushed because there is the countdown timer. And so I, for the most part, I defaulted to like just having everybody, you, you know, and especially when like you would all of a sudden get a, a, a an urgency message, I think they're called from one of the. Oh, yeah. Planes. They're like, I'm about to die. And they're not yeah. even at hell, half health. I'm like, oh, shut up. <laughs> and well, then but when I hear that, one of those two, I'm like, all units go there. You know, like that's just the easiest thing to do. I wasn't as good as I was in the last mission of kind of splitting them up into different groups. Well, it's but, definitely uh, a lot of chaos. Yeah, it it's, feels stressful. I think I when I found success and finally got my high score, it's like, okay, I don't have to rush. I just want to take my time, make sure I'm being smart about what I'm building, going out, clearing all the, the covenant on the west side of the map, because that was a big problem for me um, when I w- wasn't getting a high enough civilian rate or get one of my cargo planes was getting destroyed is because i just kind of forgot about all the covenant that are hidden on the west side of the map yeah there's there's um hunters and there's a race that that show up over there and a bunch of uh elites in the towers and drop ships do come and replenish that side of the map as well so if you if you don't clear that out right away then you'll run into some problems i just kept uh looking at the map for the just big purple dots that show up to let you know <laughs> where the covenant are and then once yeah. i notice one i just go and take them out Yep. Because you can't really do much. You can you can do a lot about the spirit the spirits, but it's going to take all your time to make sure all your units are chasing them down. It's much easier to have them drop the units, mm-hmm. and then just go clean them up. Yep. Yeah. Um. Did you get the skull too? No, I didn't grab the skull. Yeah. I'm lazy. The, the skull is when you kill the fifty elites, which shouldn't be a problem. You just kind of do that naturally. The skull is on the right, right under where the um, big base is for the Covenant. So there's like a uh... statue that's standing. So you have to go kind of the far side of the right, which you don't really want to go over there. Because <laughs> yeah. you know that's where they're coming from. But you can go over there and then it'll pop up. So you can just walk over there. I think when I ended up actually getting it is it was like I, I remembered it was a thing at the very end of the mission, like during the countdown. And I had like one flame marine. And I was just like, you go over there. <laughs> and he grabbed <laughs> it like, within oh, the last okay. like 10 seconds of the countdown. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, go, 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 buddy. Run. But he, he, he got that for me, which I was pretty excited about. And the, the, the um, skull, do you know what the skull is? What's the skull? The skull is Wuv Wu. And the, the actual write up is. All these are, these aren't, none of these have been difficulty modifiers yet, but this one is scarabs shoot a rainbow made of pure love and hearts. Oh, isn't that good? How lovely. I want to be killed <laughs> with love. I didn't know the I covenant know. loved me so much. So you need to go get that. And, and then, you know, I'm assuming we see a scarab at some point. It'll be fun to see how that. Oh, that I, I think we screen. do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> at Any least thing? one. Anything else on your run? No, that's about it, honestly. Okay, very nice. I um, I probably played this about ten times, and like, what? I, I want to get, but I want to. I don't. It's playing on Heroic. It, um, is more difficult. I I did, you know, wipe once or twice because it just didn't work out, or I got frustrated because things didn't go my way right away. Where oh, every time one of the transports it. would explode, one or two, I'd just re restart the mission anyway. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or if um, I found I really needed Forge's Warthog, if his Warthog blew up, then I was like, okay, I got to restart. And this is towards the end when I'm like, okay, I I need to get gold. So I I played it multiple times. And where I found success is, and I've, you know, this mission's stressful, but it also does teach you a lot on like the the order, the best order to build your buildings in the most efficient way. Yeah. So I built up the, you know, I went down, cleared the bottom area, then built the, um, the firebase on the west side and I went supply supply reactor and then went over to the other one and did supply supply reactor and just I so I didn't have any additional units for a little while until those got built up and then I think I what I did is expanded to the station to add t- uh, two more supply pads and at that point I either added a re- uh, a turret t- on the the east side firebase just to start to protect that because the covenant start to come oh yeah it, it gets beat up pretty quickly mm-hmm. um so i think i did that and then added a, a barracks right away and then um and then i think i did vehicle depot and then supply then air pad 
and eventually added like the other let's see because you need the third reactor i think i eventually added the third reactor to one of the two it's nice that they combine that you don't have to like build everything in one firebase it's like they they add together so if you have a reactor in one firebase and a reactor in another firebase that equals two lightning bolts versus them each having to have their oh yeah yeah it's like an overall kind of yeah so like yeah so like i'm not i don't have to i can't build only scout warthogs in one but in the other one i can build you know the the goshog but so that's handy so i kind of I, I was i got really good at building those two up and then i was able to kind of to realize that i needed to go clear out all those guys on the west and then on heroic too the locusts start to come in or locust or a horde of race start to come in and attack the um suppl- the cargo ship in the middle Two? Uh, the one closest to yeah the one closest to the um to the covenant base oh no that's one and so I, okay that must be one yep so the one closest to the covenant base so i needed to go take care of those locusts and it's still i really only had forge and my hornets and i so i healed them a couple times right away before i was able to start to build up my base or build up my army um and then i think what i did is then i built a couple pairs of marines to just kind of go take the towers and kind of plop them in because that that helped me get to my overall a thousand civilian number and then once i kind of had some of that secure then i started to pump out like a scorpion and then i did need to have i use cobras because because in heroic those locusts are bastards and those cobra cobras will just take them down in like two or three shots so i would go plant um a cobra by the by right, right outside of um transport two and like on the path that the covenant would need to take to get up there from yeah. their base, so I would just plant one there, and he and that guy would just take care of anything coming my way from the from the uh, from the locust and, and race standpoint. So I do that, and then eventually at the very end, I built some some wolverines to kind of come up and take down their air units, which was super helpful. But yeah, I, I wasn't able to get gold on heroic until I finally got all the optional objectives, and that's when I hit my seventy. Hey. <laughs> so yeah. Whew. But yeah, this mission is, is it's frustrating on the higher levels and it, it really and I think I is. talked about it on the one of the other episodes is like I want to be able to get gold on all these and it's totally doable, but that that little carrot of I got I got 10 on this? What? Like, that means I can do so much better. It is just having that um that, having that goal to look forward to makes it forces you to get better at building and moving your units around and all that. Did you um did you so you said you didn't even go up to the top right to see the covenant base? No, nah, I didn't yeah, really need to. You don't want to go, <laughs> go no. up there. It's fully decked out. And if you go up there there will be a ton of vehicles and then at the very end when the um those mega turrets spawn, you can see those bastards too. I thought about at one point maybe I'll go back just for fun to see if there's any chance that you can go up there and start to like destroy that base. But it, the way that you would have to like ignore the rest of the transports. Well, you never have enough um, units in order to go actually attack it. Uh, right? You won't. You won't have your army. Built oh yeah, because you enough. only have like thirty to start off with. There's no way. Well, I mean, I only had I had like only fifteen units. Like by the time ten minutes was gone already, so because I was building up my supplies so much and and you know doing a couple other things, I need to heal um forge and the hornets so i wasn't even able to go to like say I, I would have needed like a full 30 to go shove up in that corner and then by by then who knows if they're actually going to take it down or not because the covenant would have been so well um geared up at that point so there's really no point and i think that's what the mission's kind of telling you it's like sometimes you just need to le- let them have their base and deal with everything else that's going on in the map yeah well, it's not even really a uh, goal or anything like that. Yeah, the game never right. never pushes you that way. You could not even know it's there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so if you are struggling with this mission, I would say just be patient. You have more time than you think. By the time you're actually, you know, building up your supplies and kind of establishing your bases, you, um, you know, by the time you look up, then, like, you should be in a good enough spot to be able to react to, to the Covenant and, and reach all the goals. Um, at the very end, Captain Cutter will say will pop on. So after, so what happens? The, the transports the go away. Transports actually take off, right? And then that's that's the mission. And then everybody else evacuates. So C- Cutter says the transports are away. Uh, Sergeant Forge pull back and regroup. New orders are incoming. Uh, Forge just replies. He says, uh, "Roger that, Captain. Most of us are heading out 
of the city through the traffic tunnels, and it kind of shows shows what that looks like in game. There you go. Very That's nice. it. That's Arcadia City. This is a city. stressful mission. Yeah. Oof. It's annoying. Not my favorite. Not <laughs> Anytime my favorite. you have to like guard something, it's super annoying. Well, and you start you start with so little, and then yeah, like you are totally outnumbered, and you have to. It's just a panic panic situation where you're trying to. And I think the other thing is that you're. You have these civilians that you're trying to save that you have no control over, and this is they're the so first... dumb. Like I yeah. had two scorpions on on one of the major paths. I had two scorpions just sitting there, and the civilians would not go past them. I had like uh-huh. a bunch of them just standing there because they couldn't path <laughs> around them. I was like, "Are you joking?" Well, <laughs> and Forge has a hard time driving around them too. He won't like drive through them. They're actually they're actual objects, so he can't phase through them. Um, at one point, he was like, I, "I sent all my units up to a wraith." I'm like, "Where is Forge? What what the hell is going on?" And he was like back stuck because there was too many civilians between him and the wraith. He was like driving around in circles trying to get trying to get there. It's really annoying. <laughs> mm-hmm. But yeah, this is kind of the first time we've really seen civilians get killed in Halo, isn't it? I mean, have we? I mean, maybe uh, Reach had Reach. a little bit. Reach had some of it, yeah. You get, but, like, brutes, like, pick up civilians and, like, shoot them in yeah, the face. Yeah, that's right. But this is, yeah. So we had it in Reach and release order. This, this is, is like a time. max, like, a bigger scale. Yeah, this is a lot of civilians are dying in this. You see some scientists machine. and stuff in Halo 3 as well. Uh, and you just have to be okay with that. And I think once I... And they they even tell you that like you can't save everybody. Sorry, um, you just you have to do the best you can. Once you kind of realize that that's the case, and are okay with some a bunch of the civilians dying, then then I feel like you can kind of go about your business and and you know complete the mission with success. Well, and the sword elites like will totally fuck them up too. Oh yeah, they take like them out. crazy, mm-hmm. and they're ruthless. Yeah, Those they they just stab them, and they'll just go up to anything. Those things like the one, oh my the god, war that I talked and about. Shit. Yeah, the cobra because the cobra can't defend itself when it's in lockdown mode. So I just had I had a sword elite just taking that thing out, just swiping its sword, and I had to like I was like, oh crap! I had to build a quick a warthog to go send up to uh, to take it out. Yeah, very very intense mission for sure. But it's good. I think it's good that we're getting this experience on the front end of the campaign too. It's, oh yeah, it's like okay, you you need to be efficient at this. That's what this RTS is all about. All right. Um, let's see. Any trivia? Um, we did lose David. He had to step away, so apologies for that. Let's see here. Trivia. Some of the footage of the cameras viewing the battle aboard the Spirit of Fire in the opening cutscene this level are part of the five years long cinematic trailer, as well as the opening cinematic of the game. Um, there are. He mentioned already. There are six hornets um, on easy and normal and. There's only uh, four on the on heroic and legendary, so that's definitely a difficulty modifier. That sucks. Um, yeah, um, but but do definitely, and I think David mentioned this too, is the the veterancy really comes in handy if you keep those. Oh yeah, keep ones them alive, alive. Those guys wreck shop towards the end. Uh, at the northwest corner of the map, the Covenant have a fully upgraded base. Northeast corner, yep. Uh, protected by numerous vehicles and aircraft. It's not mandatory to destroy the base. Yep, we've talked about that. Um, editors of the official Xbox magazine were invited to play the first five campaign missions of the game, but only revealed the name of this mission, stating it to be their favorite. Oh, okay. They mentioned uh, this mission is also a good showcase for Halo Wars cooperative mode. Oh, yeah, th- we haven't talked about that, but you can do co-op on this. Did you know You that? can, yeah. Yeah, have you ever tried it? No. <laughs> I don't trust sounds- anyone. It sounds wild. I mean, we should try to do it before the end of the end of the campaign. Just to see. We'll have to do yeah, this mission because it it's such a pain in the ass. Yeah, right. It would be nice to have some help. There. Uh, so the last one is there is a hidden console. Okay, we talked about Adam, so that was the last one. Yay! Very nice. What's that black box? So that black box is right by Adam. What's the black box have to say? Uh, it says uh, July 20th, 2520, Captain Alexander. The last civilian of the Spirit of Fire retires from active duty at the conclusion of the Vernant mission. The ship is requisitioned by the UNSC and is scheduled for refit. Mm-hmm. So just kind of early uh, early history of the Spirit of Fire. Yeah, I like that. A little background on the Spirit of Fire, which is good. 
We are. We talked about the red team. I think we're going to dive into red team a little more in the next mission, where we can actually do things with them. And they're like, I don't think all of them get names in this mission. I think Jerome does. He he pops on at the com and chats with you, but I don't think the other two even get named when you mouse over them. Yeah. Or, or try to select them. So we'll talk about them a little bit more next mission. Uh, anything else to add before we do community? Uh, nope. I think that's about it. Cool. Let's do community, and I will take over Facebook. What? I will do it. And my pop culture knowledge, my music and pop culture knowledge has just diminished over the last 10 years, <laughs> so I apologize if I do not know all these. If you're if you're throwing out um, references, oh, so let me read the question. Give Red Team a theme song. Question for Mission Debrief. Halo Wars, Arcadia Mission, Colin Perkins, Admin, January 27th. <laughs> no, you get to do it. At 9.40 a.m. Um, yeah, so I'm not going to get all of these. And I, I'm a big heavy metal guy, and some of these songs were heavy metal. So I was like, oh, man, I wish you really know this. Or like even there's some death metal mentions in here as well. But the first one comes from Ian Francis. We know him. And it's um, Red as, instead of Blue. Remember the song Blue Da Ba D? Oh, um, yeah. There's one that's red, and it's it's actually pretty funny. It's um it's the song, and then it's some some weird. The video on YouTube that he posted is it's of like Mario and Luigi all in like red, some weird animation going what? on. And all it is is a voiceover. Anytime the song says blue, a voiceover will cut it and say red. Oh, I love <laughs> those. Those are really it's funny. Actually, good. I love those ones. Yeah, you should check that out. Manny Bautista says, "Why can we? Why can't we be friends?" Uh, he, but he says, "Why can we be friends?" That must be his oh. title. Um, for the Covenant and and Flood by Pantera for obvious, obviously the Flood. Which mm, I don't know. Um, anyway, <laughs> Lucas Fitzer says, "Shoot to thrill." DC, DC, <laughs> love that one. Very good one. Sabrina says, "Tripod." fly so high you need to go to the facebook group and watch a couple of these this one is very funny it's a <laughs> it's like a sketch comedy of a um a trio um singing and somebody gets killed by a rocket launcher it's very good oh it's that sounds funny. amazing yeah. <laughs> jesse white says uh mama said knock you out that's yep. good matthew blankenship big iron which, <laughs> which reminds me of like playing fallout yep. Do you know that song yeah, it's totally a fallout with a big song. iron on his head. Yeah, very good. <laughs> um, we'll try to get David to do some music stuff, but we may not be able to. So copyright issues. You, yeah, yeah, right. Brad uh, Brad Tharp says "Near Automata," uh, a beautiful song, and it's a, it's a metal cover that he posted in the Facebook group. Very good. Patrick says Lamb of God 512, <laughs> which is a, like the, the death metal that's heavy. Um, and the video is also very interesting. And then Randy Peterson, the final one is, and this one's up my alley, is Bulls on Parade, Rage Against the Machine. Yes. Love it. <laughs> All right. What does uh, the Discord have to say? Mm, you don't want to know. But you okay. have some weeding to do. I looked in that today. I was like, whoa, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, we got Party Hard by Andrew WK. Mm -hmm. We have STFU by Filthy Frank. Yeah, I saw that video. I was like, Shut what is this? Shut the fuck up. <laughs> You're yeah. a fucking con. It's really good. I love it. That's a funny song. Uh, Into the Fire by Asking Alexandria. Uh, Badass by Saliva. Figure It Out by Royal Blood. I know that one. People, Ship by Slipknot. Yeah, heavy metal stuff. <laughs> End of the world as we know it. That's good. <laughs> oh, now they're just talking about shit. Why? <laughs> oh, the Red Team suite. So just just the sweet theme of Red Team from Halo Wars 2. So. Oh, sure. Good it's like cheater. The, the song is named that, right? Yeah, cheater. <laughs> uh, he's, he, instead, Physical Sky said uh, Lightning Strike by Judas Priest. There you go. <laughs> nice. Uh, Dizzy Bumper says the Halo theme in Kazoo. Very good. Yeah. <laughs> if you're a podcast Great. evolved listener, that one is played. Oh Kazoo. god. <laughs> uh, Headlong by Queen. All right. Blue Calx has posted something that is not in this language, and it's 
<laughs> this isn't going to be good, guys. I'm not sure if I'm going to get in trouble for this or not. Go uh, on. Jamie Y. Los Chamankos? Uh, <laughs> uh, it was made the year I was born, 1995, so okay. good. Good, and then we got a lot of uh, the warthog theme from Red vs. Blue. So Jedi Spartan thirty eight suggested that one. Nice, very good. There we go. We That's got good. a bunch of Red Team has a n- nice selection of theme songs to choose That's from right. now. They can pick. Yeah, they can choose from this selection. Uh, very nice. Thank you for your uh, f- thanks for your notes and your ideas. And if you are part of the groups, go in and check out the videos. It's fun to to see. Some of the ridiculous ones that I didn't know existed. <laughs> no All right, that'll do it for our debriefing of Arcadia City, a mission from Halo Wars. On the next episode, we'll be covering Arcadia Outskirts. Send us your thoughts at podcastevolved at gmail.com or drop us a tweet at Podcast Evolved on Twitter. You can also support the show by visiting Podcast Evolved on Patreon. Until next time, Evolved. Evolved. <laughs>